Greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Maya the King and today we're taking a look at a game that came out earlier today on Steam called King of Seas. Developed by 3D Clouds and published by Team 17, King of Seas is an action role-playing game set in a procedurally generated pirate world. An epic adventure awaits you in a fantastic world, a universe that will keep you anchored as you struggle to become the king of all pirates. Now, yes, I know that Biomutant released today as well, and that I could be taking a look at that game instead, but that game already has a lot of attention and a lot of advertisements, and let's face it, bigger, more popular YouTube channels than mine are going to be garnering all the attention for that one. But, you know what a lot of people are going to miss? This little gem of a game, King of Seas. Now, if you guys want me to take a look at Biomutant, then let me know in the comments below, but you'll probably have to wait a day or two for that video to come out. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Biomutant. Biomutant has got plenty of attention on its own, it doesn't need my help. We're here to talk about King of Seas. This game is very reminiscent of Sid Meier's Pirates, or sorry, Sid Meier's Pirates. I know that's how it's pronounced, but I always say Sid Meier's for some reason. That's how I grew up saying it. Anyway, if you don't know what that game is, then you're probably a lot younger than me. It's an older game that came out forever ago and was very innovative and adventurous in terms of being a pretty great pirate game. This game is very similar to that game, and looks like it got most of its inspiration from that original goodie. So, as always, ladies and gents, let's take a look at the pros and cons that I was about to find in this game and my overall thoughts and recommendations, alright? But even before that, while you're watching this video, if you happen to find it informative or entertaining in any way, would you please, 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 please consider supporting my small little channel. A like, a comment, a subscription, or all three would do wonders for helping my channel to grow. It costs you nothing, harms you in no way, but it helps me out phenomenally. Thanks. Now then, on to the pros. Number one, the first thing I noticed on this game was the graphics. Immediately I was pleased with what I was looking at. There's an attention to detail here, but there's also a broad spectrum to look at. In other words, from afar, it looks good, and up close, it looks good. It's very pleasing to the eyes, and it fits perfectly. I absolutely love the graphical art design settings present in this game. I could go on and on and on about how I really enjoy the look of this game through and through, but uh, I don't have time for that. Number two, the tutorial. Hallelujah, a tutorial. A good one, too. It's fun, it's engaging, and it teaches you how to play the game in a meaningful way that doesn't take you out of the game. It eases you into the story and into the overall gameplay while also teaching you. This is how I like to see tutorials being used because this is how they are meant to be used. So by the first hour of gameplay, you'll already know how to play, and that is great news. Number three. Remember how I always say to show the best your game has to offer in those first two hours or else everyone's just going to end up getting a refund? Well, this game does a great job of that. So for this positives we're going into the, for this positive sorry we're going into the gameplay mostly the mechanics are pretty well thought out the ui is nicely designed and easy to navigate but it also feels appropriate for this game of being a pirate then you have the overall controls and the, the feel of playing this game itself now i do have a negative about the controls but we're going to go over that here in a minute for now just know that everything felt appropriate and not once was i confused irritated or frustrated over the overall gameplay aspects cannon firing, special abilities, turning your ship, none of it felt weird or odd. Okay, well it did a little bit, that's just because it's the type of game it is. The point is, is for the game that it is, the controls are fine. Number four, the sound. It's beautiful. It has the ambient sound effects that I love to hear in games. It has the appropriate sound effects for certain things like cannons, seagulls, waves, fish, digging up buried treasure. They all sound really good and fit perfectly into this game. And don't even get me started on the voice acting or the music. I mean, the voice acting, while it might not be the best that I've ever heard, it, it had a whole heck of a lot of commitment and effort just grand, jammed into it. I mean, th that voice actor guy in the beginning, you know, clearly, he, the, I don't think English was his first language, but man, he put his all into that. And I got to give props because even though it, it didn't, you know, sound perfect, it, it sounded just epic in its own way. I guess that's the best way to put it. And the music is just, well, I mean, just listen to this. See how good that sounds? I mean, damn, I wish there were more music, but 
you know, it kind of fades in and out during the gameplay, which actually is really nice. Sometimes the music is there, and it sets the tone for you, and it draws you in, and really makes you feel things. But then when it's not there, the overall ambiance sounds around you make up for the lack of music. The, the sound, I'd, I'd have to say, is probably the best quality of the game here. The sound effects, the ambiance, and the music, they are phenomenal. It's hard for me to find where it's been done better. Number five, and the last one I've got for the positives, is the overall stability of the game. The, the game was more smooth than butter, more fluid than water, more stable than my table. It had no bugs or glitches that I could find in any way. No glitching whatsoever, no screen tearing, no frame rate drops, nothing. It worked perfectly. And it was smooth. It was so smooth, guys. Like, I can't even describe how smooth. Smoother than butter is an understatement of how smooth it was, all right? So that's all I got for the pros. Now we got to move on to the cons. Uh, the first up here is the controls. Remember how I mentioned them earlier? Well, on the Steam Store page, and when you first enter the game, it does tell you that only real pirates use a gamepad. In other words, they're, they're calling us PC users lame. Well, I take offense to this, developers. But they do say that they will eventually fix and improve the PC controls, and I really hope they do because I don't like to use gamepads on my PC games. I use and master the PC controls, no matter what the game is. And if you don't like it, then tough titties. The point is, the controls aren't very intuitive, and they can get a bit confusing and annoying at times. But with some dedicated time, you can easily learn them and play the game just fine, and plus, like I said, they do intend to optimize them at a later date, so... You know, fair enough, I guess. Number two, the artwork of the characters themselves. Now, while the overall artwork of the world and the ships and whatnot is really smooth and nice and pleasant to the eyes, the art of the characters themselves during dialogue is actually really poor and almost childlike. It's super annoying and it really pulls you out of the moment of sailing your beautiful ship in these beautiful lands to then looking at my son's interpretation of a pirate talking to my son's interpretation of a prince. My son, who is turning seven soon, by the way. So, yeah. Kinda off-putting, not gonna lie. Number three, the lack of innovation. Now, don't get me wrong, this game does a really good job in a lot of different ways, but it's not offering us anything new here. Sid Meier's Pirates had way more going for it than this game does. I mean, in that game, you could board enemy ships and watch the crews fight each other. As far as I know, you can't do that here, and I've sunk a few ships already. In that game, you could duel the captain in a little mini-game which could be quite challenging and could affect the overall battle of you boarding their ship. This game doesn't have any mini-games like that. In that older game, Sid Meier's Pirates, you could have tiny little army strategic battles on dry land when attacking cities or pirate strongholds or whatever. This game does not have that. In the older game, you had a sneaking into the city mini-game, which this game does not have. A courting system where you could court ladies and marry them. A marriage system, but that's not here. It had reputations and dialogue options. When you go to a tavern, it was fluid with animations. It was immersive because you could see your guy walk into the tavern. You could see all the different things you could do in the tavern. And it was just so much more immersive than this, which is you're in a tavern and then it just shows a guy and then another UI menu, which you've been looking at the whole time. It, it just... This game takes several steps back in terms to the overall innovation and possibilities of what you can do in this game compared to the old Sid Meier's Pirates game. The only thing this offers that's better than that old game is the faster, more fluid, and smoother gameplay and its beautiful graphics and sounds. But if you've been following me for a while, which most of you haven't, let's be honest, so I'm going to go ahead and say this now, graphics and sound do not make a great game. Just having amazing writing can make a great game. It's probably the only thing that can make a great game. You can have a game that's got great gameplay, but horrible sounds, horrible graphics, horrible writing, and it's going to fail. You can see a game that's got amazing graphics and amazing sound, but then it only offers you like an hour of gameplay, and it's got terrible writing. You can see all these different things, and these are games that fail and games that don't do very well. But if you take a game that's got just a really engaging premise, with really engaging gameplay and engaging writing, it doesn't need great graphics or sound. And I'll point you guys in the direction of Mountain Blade Warband. The graphics, terrible. The stability, not very good. The sound, it, it, below average. But the gameplay mechanic and the writing are so intense, diverse, amazing, and immersive that it doesn't matter. You will lose yourself in that game playing it for weeks upon weeks as you're just immersed in this world in this game. 
So having great graphics and great sound isn't everything. And that is where this game is probably has its failure. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. But if you take this and compare it to Sid Meier's Pirates, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this game is almost exactly like Sid Meier's Pirates. It fails. Sid Meier's Pirates gets an A+. This game gets a C-, just barely passing. It fills in the boxes, but it just doesn't quite give you everything that that older game does. And that's where we have the problem. But those are all I have for the negatives. And I just wanted to put in that last little point there because it was, it was off script, first of all. And it was just me talking from the heart about how I feel about this and how I feel about that older game. But for this one, for my final thoughts and my overall recommendation, I mean, it's a toughie. On the one hand, I really want to recommend this game because it's great in a lot of different ways. It's beautiful and it sounds amazing, and that smooth, fluid gameplay is just so pleasant to experience. And it might offer a little bit more content that I'm simply unaware of due to my lack of gameplay time, but honestly, if anything, I think I'd have to recommend you guys to go find and play Sid Meier's Pirates. It's basically the same as this game, but offers you far more in terms of content, gameplay, innovation, and immersion. As long as you don't mind slightly worse graphics and a slightly less than smooth gameplay experience, then you'll get far more out of that game than you will this game. Hell, that game is even harder in difficulty than this game in several aspects, so if you're hoping for something more of a challenge, then that'd be your best bet too. But if you still want to try this game out after all I've said and shown you, then that's not the worst idea either. I mean, this game is really good. It's not charging too much, it does offer you a lot, and it'll definitely give you that pirate fix you've been looking for. So honestly, it's up to you guys. I mean, personally for me, I'd rather go play the older game, but I'm willing to keep this one and put in a lot more time to find out how much it actually offers. I may be wrong, and if it does offer more than what I've seen or mentioned here, then, you know, it'd definitely be worth it. But it's kind of like that whole Mountain Blade thing I talked about. You know, what do you want to do? If you want to go play a crappy game that says they can do the same things that Mountain Blade does, and then they only offer you one third of it, but they give you amazing graphics and sounds, you're probably going to want to go back to Mountain Blade Warband because that game did everything you loved so much. And while it might be the same thing over and over again, at least you knew you enjoyed that, rather than risking your time and money on something you're not sure if you're even going to enjoy. It's kind of similar here. If bad graphics and, and sound don't bother you, the old one is definitely better than this one. So, I, I guess that's just the best way to put it. I mean, if you're looking for a really immersive RPG pirate experience, go with Sid Meier's Pirates. It's like $10 on Steam and gives you far more in terms of gameplay content than this game does. But if you want something that's beautiful, top of the line in terms of pirate gameplay and focuses more on the sailing aspects and the ambiance, then I'd recommend this one. So honestly, it's up to you guys. Personally, I'm going to play both. One for when I'm feeling, you know, one way and one for when I'm feeling the other way. This game is indeed a pretty good game, and I would recommend everyone at least give it a solid try, even if you're not normally into these kinds of games. Within the first hour, you're going to know whether you like it or not, because it shows you pretty much everything it has to offer in the first hour and a half. So, you know, that would be you'd, you'd find out enough whether you want to keep it and enjoy it or get your refund. I'm not going to get a refund. I want to play it some more and really dive into it, because one thing it offers that the oldie doesn't offer, and I find really interesting, is the magic. Oh yes, ladies and gents. This game has magic, and it is intuned into your crew, your ship, your cannons, special abilities, and the lore. So let's hope you guys stayed through the whole video and, you know, you watched all the way up to this point, because that's a secret little gem for those of you committed enough to hearing the whole thing. Yes, there is magic in this game, and it's pretty freaking cool how they utilize it in this pirate game. So that's another strong reason why you might want to check this out. But that's all the time I got for this video overall, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it informative. Thank you all so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to show your support to my tiny channel. Alright everybody, thanks again, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure, and until then, I bid you all farewell.